Welcome back to Yoga Express, your virtual stretch clinic that helps you move the body to still the mind. My name is Banu Suresh. I'm your host for this program. And as you can see, we have today a return participant who you've been asking about for a long time. You have seen Kiwan Kato to my immediate left. Kiwan has been with us in several episodes before, and suddenly he decided to disappear. He went off my radar for some time, and I tracked him down got him back here. You've also seen Ann Chin. Ann has been with us in maybe three episodes before. Yes. Ann has been with us in uh, two or three episodes previously, so I'm sure she has an unforgettable face as well, so I'm sure you will see more of her. Now that spring is here, spring is officially around the corner. In fact, I believe officially we are into spring on the past Sunday at the time of taping. So it's just two days into spring and we already have a lot of energy right here in the studios. We have Nancy Lugo. Nancy, did I say that right? Yep. Nancy Lugo. We're going to start our introductions with Nancy, but before I go ahead and have Nancy and Kiwan give you a refresher and maybe Anchin as well, I'd like to thank our amazing crew today. We have a full house wonderful crew and I'm really excited to tell you that under the guidance of our studio manager Rich, our, our facilitator Roberta Espinel who is also the trainer for the camera crew, we have Karina Lugo, Irina Colgan, Edison Albin, Lynn Small and Paul Pirog in our control room and I'd also like to thank our camera staff Fazia Najar, Josiane Hurd, Sharon Quinn, and Florence Choice. Thank you all for this amazing teamwork. We're very excited to have you all take care of us during the next couple of days. Now, <coughs> Nancy, I'm gonna ask you a little bit about yourself. You have a couple of minutes. You're gonna be on this, in the spotlight for a few, actually 30 seconds would be good. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Yeah, I'm originally from Venezuela, mm -hmm. um, but I live in the United Kingdom. Right. What do you do there? I work as a petroleum engineer. Wow. Yeah, I've been yes. there for nine years now. This is a very appropriate time to have a degree with that <laughs> in that, right? Yes. Well, you're going to be in great demand, Nancy, in a couple of Ho months, maybe, Hopefully, maybe in a few yes. years. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're going to make a lot of money. I better shake your hand before you get too famous. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Kiwan, you went off our radar for quite some time. What happened? We missed you. I did. You're um, going to have to reintroduce yourself. <laughs> so my name is Kiwan Cato. Mm -hmm. um, I am publishing a book. Um, and so that kind of took away, oh, well, took right. some time away from practicing. But, How's um, it going? It's going pretty good. We're on a reading tour right now. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully that will do some good promotion for when we release at the end Amazing. of May. End of May? You're yes. expecting a May release? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We will probably take a bit of a taping break around June, but when it's being released in May, Please, feel free, come on the show, bring your book. We'll talk a little bit about it. Of course, we cannot do a book review, <laughs> but we'll be happy to introduce it to our viewers. Sure. I still remember. So who is it dedicated to? <laughs> Are you There's no dedication at the moment. Uh-oh, I put Kiwan on the spot. I put Kato on the spot by asking him on air whether he was going to dedicate it to his mother <laughs> because she was your inspiration, correct, yes. for the book? Yes. But I think that itself is a great dedication. That's very nice. I'm sure she's going to be very happy to hear that. If she hasn't heard it from you, she <laughs> must. She will hear it now. <laughs> and Chin, thank you so much for coming back. It's a pleasure always to have you back. Would you reintroduce yourself to our viewers? Tell us a little more. Okay, sure. Originally, I came from China. Mm -hmm. Like you, you've come from a foreign country too. Uh, but I have been living in the United States for almost 17 years. So I love New York and uh, I love 
in the city. I love running in Central Park. Now I start to like and love yoga. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. You know what? The good news, we're going to start taping in Central Park. Yeah, that's what so, I'm yeah. so glad about. <laughs> that's right. So you come jogging, and when you're finished with your run, come stri straight into our program and start stretching with us. Yes. That'll be great for the show. It'll be good for you. You're going to stretch anyway, right? Yes. So you might as well stretch with us and give it a name, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> OK. Today, at Kiwan's request, since Kiwan has been in several episodes before, Nancy is not yet familiar with our format, we are going to do one sequence today, between today and tomorrow, we're going to do two sequences. The first one, dedicated to Kiwan Kato, balanced postures. Tomorrow's episode is going to be twist. So the balance ones will involve a lot of standing and standing on one leg, balance. So a lot of focus is required. What you want to remember when you're in balance postures, look at a point in front of you that doesn't move. Don't look at people and focus. Think only of that spot in front of you. Listen carefully to the instructions and stretch with us. Now before we go ahead and start stretching, we're going to stand up in just a moment, a little bit of housekeeping. We have a fridge magnet for you with a simple sequence called 48 plus. We have a postcard with the same ailment specific sequence. They're 48 basic stretches. And we also have a book called Yoga Secrets. So if you come on our show, we will give you all of these. That's a lot of extra support. Besides this, we also have a website and a blog, both of which will come up at the end of the show or sometime during the show. So you can go visit the blog and the website to get a good idea of what we do right here on the show. Yoga Express is Monday through Friday on Time Warner 57, RCN 84, and Files 35 at 1.30 in the afternoon Eastern Time. So 1.30, if you are not in front of your TV, switch on your computer. We tape in the studios of Manhattan Neighborhood Net Network. So just go to mnn.org Monday through Friday at 1.30, and you can see us stretch. And you can stretch with us, too. OK, are we ready? Shall we stretch? We're going to stand up. We're going to take you through a few balanced postures. What we're going to do, balanced postures are not exactly easy to hold for a long time. So we're going to try and hold it as long as we can. But folks at home, if you have a chair next to you, keep that close to you and try to hold your balanced postures for a longer time. It improves concentration, and you learn to listen to your inner mind. OK, I've got my little cheat sheet that I need right here. <coughs> First balance posture we're going to take you through is called Utkat Asan. Utkat is thunderbolt. You have your postcard, right? If you want to share with Nancy, and I'll share this with uh, Anne. Posture number three on your sequence, Utkat Asan. What we're going to do is we're going to inhale, take our arms up just a little bit above shoulder height, and then we're going to exhale and bend at the knees. Make sure your feet are about four to six inches apart. Keep the insides of your feet parallel to each other arms by your side. Inhale, bring your arms up to shoulder height, palms facing each other, facing in, just a little bit above the shoulder height. Now, exhale, bend at the knees. Now, if you feel there is too much pressure on your knees when you bend in this manner, you can tilt back just a little bit to take the pressure off of your ankles or your knees. Now, if you feel you can handle it, lean forward. Because when you lean forward, that makes you, it actually helps you engage your low back muscles. So this posture also strengthens your low back as well as your knees. Let's inhale and come up. Exhale and relax. <coughs> Where's my cheat sheet? OK. The other posture we're going to go into is called Vriksh Asan, Vriksh or tree. And Kiwan, I know you're especially good at this, so we're going to have you you know, we're, oh, well, you know what, let's, let's see if we can just talk ourselves through it, but observe Kiwan as well, because I've watched you in this. You're able to hold it for a long time. So we're going to try and hold, stand on one leg for quite a while. Transfer the weight to your right leg. Lift your left heel off of the ground. Turn your left knee out to the side. Now, first, whenever you start a balanced posture where it involves the legs, you might want to, just for balance, just place your hands on your hips first. Make sure that your legs are aligned correctly. And then when you feel ready, focus at a point in front of you. Inhale, lift your left foot. Very gently hold on to your left ankle with your left hand. Attach the sole of your left foot to the inside of your upper right thigh. 
And once you feel nice and secure right there, place your palms in front of your chest. Now, you don't have to go all the way to the inner upper, uh, inside of the upper right thigh. You can have your foot right there with your toe resting gently on the floor and your heel around your ankle, or you can go to your calf. Just try to avoid your knees. You don't want to push your patella. You don't want to push your kneecap out to the side. So I'm going to try and hold it up. Now, keep inhaling. Inhale, take your arms up. Let's take our arms very gently. Focus at a point that doesn't move. And the rest of us are going to have our eyes open. Kato is going to try and close his eyes. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to try to close my eyes, but I'm just going to look down at a point that's closer to me. Exhale and release very gently. Release the arms and then release the leg, left leg. Now transfer the weight to your left leg. <coughs> you want to make sure that you're feeling balanced. Right now you can already feel an imbalance on the two sides. I'm sure, do, do you feel that? One side feels like it's all centered and nice and calm. The other side, how about you, Anne? You feel that, right? Your right leg is waiting to go up, right? Yes. <laughs> you want to balance. <laughs> See, whenever you practice, whenever you stretch at home, remember, it's very important to stretch both sides of the body, especially if that's what the posture involves. If the posture is a full, complete stretch on both sides within the same cycle, that's fine. You've got your balance. Now, transfer the weight to your left leg. Lift your right foot at the heel. Turn your right knee out to the side. Makes it a little bit easier to hold your posture. Now, place just your left hand on your left hip. Balance first. We could take both hands, but we're getting ready to go right into the posture. Inhale, lift your right foot off of the floor. Hold on to the right ankle with the right hand. Look at a point in front of you that doesn't move. Attach the sole of your right foot to the inside of your upper left thigh. So you want to hold it right there. And then when you feel ready, now remember again, you don't have to go all the way up. You can place your ankle, your heel is right at your left ankle. Your toe can rest lightly on the floor. Just make sure your right knee comes out to the side or at your calf. Just avoid your knee. Now, once you're there, Kiwan, I think I can see from the side of my eye. We don't have a monitor today, but I can see Kiwan already has, and so does Nancy and Anne. I need to join them. Palms in front. Now, inhale. Take your arms overhead and try to close your eyes if you can, but I'm just going to look down. Exhale and release. Very gently, release the right leg. Now, if you feel that your concentration is improving day by day, you might want to bring your glance closer and closer when you're looking at a point that doesn't move till you're almost looking at your feet. And after that, when your eyes are almost closed, it's very easy to just shut them completely, and that's when your real balance experience happens. The tree posture is not necessarily one of my favorites, but I was very motivated by <coughs> Kato getting into that, so I had to try it. We all want to give it a chance. Nancy and Anne, you both were also amazing in that posture. It was amazing how we were able to focus, you know, just at one point. <laughs> Now, transfer your weight again to the right leg this time. We're going to go into a posture called Thula Danda. Thula Danda is balancing scales. Danda is stick. Thula is balance or even. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our whole torso. One leg goes out to the back. The torso comes forward, and our arms will come forward. So the whole body is going to be like a T. When you look at us in profile, if one of the cameras pick us up in profile, the body will look like a T, like a capital T. Transfer your weight to the right leg. <coughs> I'm going to stagger myself right here. Uh, Kato, you might want to come forward and Nancy. Yes, so we don't hit each other. <laughs> now take your left leg back just a little bit. Place your palms in front of your chest. Elbows are raised. Your elbows always stay raised when your palms are together. Essentially what happens is when your elbows are up, <coughs> you're actually focusing and you're staying alert. The moment you flop your elbows, your mind starts wandering. So the idea is to actually stay alert, stay in the moment. Inhale the arms up. Now comes the tough part. So make sure you look at a point that doesn't move. This time, I'm going to look at the mic in front of us. We're going to inhale. We're, uh, we're actually going to exhale. So you inhale up. We've inhaled up. We're going to exhale and dip the torso, lift the left leg up. 
exhale and dip. You do not have to take your leg all the way up. You just want to make sure your arms don't go too. Let's inhale, come up, bring your leg back down. You just want to make sure that your arms do not dip all the way down. The moment you exhale and relax. The moment your arms, let's bring our arms down by the side. The moment your arms go below the shoulder, that's when you start losing balance. I'm not sure which camera I'm supposed to be looking at, but I'm sure we have amazing camera folks, so you'll pick us up. Now transfer your weight, don't forget the other side. Transfer your weight to the left leg, thank you. Now place your palms in front of your chest, elbows are raised, inhale, we have two minutes, great, thank you. Oh, camera two, thank you, <laughs> right. Inhale the arms up. Now we're gonna exhale, dip the torso, lift the right leg. Try to keep your foot flexed, the raised foot is flexed. Inhale, come up, bring both the legs together. Exhale, bring your arms down and relax. Bring them by your side. This time we're gonna place, we're gonna transfer the weight to the right leg. Place your right hand on your right hip. We're gonna get into a posture called Uttita Pada. Uttita means raised, Pada is foot. Now your left heel is raised off of the ground, very gently, just like we did in the tree posture. We're gonna lift the left foot and hold on to the left big toe. The reason that you might notice Kato and Anne have got socks on. Don't get deceived by it. They know exactly what they're doing. They've got rubber dots under their socks. You want to be sure that you're safe. Be very mindful of your body. You don't want to slip. When you have rubber dots, there's more traction. So Nancy and I have not got socks on, so we, I think we have our grip on the floor. But they both have socks, but they've got rubber dots. They know what they're doing. You do have rubber dots, right? <laughs> well, we're on air, so we're going to say yes. <laughs> OK, Uttita Pada, raised foot. Now lift your left heel, after you've transferred the weight to your right leg, lift your left heel off of the floor, very gently inhale, lift your left foot off of the ground, hold on to the left big toe. Now here's the challenge, if you have your socks on, you're gonna have to hold your whole foot. Now this is where Nancy and I have a little bit of an edge. So if you've got hold of your big toe or your foot, inhale and extend your leg out, either in front of you, or if you want to go to the side, that's too much of a challenge for me. So I'm gonna stay in front so I can hold my balance. Exhale and release. Let's relax, transfer the weight to your left leg. Remember, if you did not have your socks on, let's say you're practicing at home or wherever you are in your studio at your work. If you're practicing bare feet, the idea in holding on to the big toe I'm not sure if any of you remember this. Kato, you might remember, we may have mentioned one of the episodes before, probably not in Anne's episode. All, there are 72,000 nerve endings that end in the soles of our feet and the palms of our hands. So when you're holding on, you might be familiar with the reflexology charts that they have in China too, right? Mm -hmm. Have you heard of those? Yes. Like all the nerves, that end at the, in the soles of our feet, they lead to some gland and organ. Yes. So the big toe, those nerves lead to the brain. So when you hold on to the big toe, you're applying pressure, so you're actually sharpening your brain. So if you have a chance, try and practice bare feet, because that way you can feel the pressure. Let's say you're on sand, <coughs> it gives you a kind of pressure depending on your body weight. Now, before we forget to stretch on the other side, transfer your weight to the left leg. Place your left hand on your left hip for balance. <laughs> Lift your right heel off of the floor. Inhale, lift your right foot, and then hold on to your right big toe or your foot with your right hand or your ankle, and inhale and extend your leg out in front of you. Now, if you don't want to go too far out, that's fine. If you want to try and challenge yourself, you want to try and go to the side, and if I hit you, I apologize in advance. <laughs> inhale, and let's release very gently. Relax. Balanced postures do take a lot of focus, a lot of concentration, a lot of listening skills as well, because we really want to listen to our inner voice. If we did not have someone calling out the instructions, you would be listening to your own instructions when you're practicing at home. 
Kato, before we go ahead, I just want to ask you, you're actually now training with the trainers as well, right? Yes. And you go to the gym a lot. Correct. It's a pity it's so cold. I wanted people to remember your tattoo. I would love to show. <laughs> I love showing off your tattoo. What's it about again? It's the fraternity that I was in. That's right, yeah. Well, next time, when summer comes in, we keep ta uh, taping. Kato is going to show you his tattoo. I like that. Okay, let's go into the next balance posture. It's called Natraj Asan. How are we doing for time? Josiane, we have enough time to keep going? We have seven minutes, great. Natraj Asan, or dancer's pose, is another balance posture that involves not just balance and concentration, it looks graceful, and it involves a beautiful quadriceps stretch. So the quads are the muscles in front of your thighs, your upper thighs. Transfer your weight to the left leg this time. Place your left hand on your left hip. Look at a point, either further ahead. The further ahead you look, the easier it is to hold your balance. If you want to challenge yourself, you can look at something closer. So now that we've done a few balance postures here in the studios, we're going to try and look at the mic right there, the floor mic. Lift your right heel off of the floor. Take your hand from behind, hold on to the right ankle. So first you want to get a good grip on your ankle. Now once you're steady and nice and steady, try to keep your knees close to each other. Inhale the left arm up, so right knee goes up, left arm goes up. Now we're going to exhale, dip our torso, lift our right knee. Exhale and dip. You don't want to take your arm too low below your shoulder, you might lose balance. But if your balance is good, feel free to go as deep as you can. Inhale, come up. Exhale and release. Remember, if you are able to hold a posture for a long time, that's great because the longer you hold, longer your holding time, the more effective is the stretch for you. You can actually feel a wonderful release, a wonderful relaxation while you're still in the posture. But if you cannot hold it for long in the beginning, it's okay. Don't give up on yourself. Keep going. Transfer the weight to your right leg. Place your right hand on your right hip for balance first. Now, lift your left heel off of the ground. We're going to bend the left leg at the knee. Hold on to the left ankle from behind this time. Natraj Asan. Natraj is also the name of Lord Natraja or Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva is supposed to have lots of names, but we're not going to go into the spiritual side. Now, once you've got a good grip, keep your knees close together. It's more of a challenge keeping your knees close. Left knee is up, right arm goes up. Inhale. Exhale, dip your torso, lift your knee. Now, I find that one side, let's inhale, come up. I find one side of my body cooperates a lot more than the other. Exhale and release. I also noticed Kato didn't want to come out of this posture. You were feeling great, right? You looked amazing and very graceful. And how did you feel? Actually, I need some feedback, Nancy. How did you feel? It was a bit challenging more than was this one, but it was great. More of a challenge than the left one. For me, my left leg cooperates a little more. I'm able to lift that a little more. My right side doesn't go as high. I don't know. How about you, Anne? Yeah, me too. Right? One know. side feels yeah. a little stronger. Kato? You, we, we have to keep watching you and see what is it that you're looking at that makes you hold it for a long time, but you did look amazing, so that was great. Okay, we have probably about five minutes, which is perfect because we have three more, two more postures at least to take you through. We're gonna get into a posture called Garudasan. Garuda is the Sanskrit name for eagle, and when you cross over your legs and your arms, the whole body looks like the beak of an eagle. So very straight, very slim, all the way through. Four minutes, perfect. Thank you, Rich. Transfer the weight to your left leg. First, we're gonna work on the leg, which means you need very strong legs. You need to make sure that your legs, that your eyes stay focused on a spot so your legs hold you till your arms cross over. Now, cross your right leg. So use the props you already have. Use your hands, move your right knee over the left, and see if you can try and tuck your right foot behind the left calf. Now, if it doesn't get that far, that's okay. You can even hold it right there next to your left calf or close to your left ankle, that's fine. Right knee is up, left arm goes up. Inhale, exhale, dip the left elbow over the right and twine your hands together. If you come out of a posture, get right back in. Bend your knees if you have to, I know I do. Inhale, come up, release the right leg first. 
then release the arms. Anyone want to take a guess why we need to release the legs first and then the arms? What? Oh, why? <laughs> why do you think we release the legs first? Ballet. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't fall out of the posture. Also, we got into the leg, we twined our legs first. So you need to spend about the same amount of time holding the arms and the legs twined around. But yes, mostly it's for the balance. So you don't lose balance and fall out because while we're releasing the arms, perfect. While we're releasing the arms, we might lose balance. So yes. So untangle your legs first, then your arms. Now, we have a couple of minutes, so we'll just do the twist on the other side, the Garuda or Eagle posture on the other side, and then get into one seated balance and close the episode for today. Transfer your weight to your right leg. Now what we're gonna do is use your hands, cross your left knee over the right, bend your right knee, look at a point that doesn't move, try to twine your left foot around your right ankle, left knee is up, right arm goes up, bend, exhale, cross the right elbow over the left, twine your palms together, twine your arms together, and look straight ahead. Right knee goes over the left hand. That's perfectly all right, though. Oh, very nice. Inhale, let's come up. Release the left leg and then the arms. And we have one more posture. We have time, just enough time for the last one. It's a seated balance posture. Let's all come down before we close the episode for today one more time. I'd like to thank our amazing camera crew, Fauzia Najar, Josiane Hood, Sharon Quinn, and Florence Choice and our wonderful control room crew as well, Karina Lugo, Irina Colgan, Paul Kurog, Edison Albin, and Lynn Small. Under the guidance of Ritz Bezial, our studio manager and facilitator, Roberto Espinel. Thank you so much for great teamwork right here. Nancy Lugo, Kiwan Cato, Ann Chin, and I'm Banu Suresh. We're gonna close with Paripurna Nava, or full boat. We're just gonna have our legs, extend your legs out, in front of you, you will need to engage your low back muscles when you are in this posture. So what you're gonna do is tighten your low back. There is, you wanna resist the temptation to use your quadricep muscles. A lot of us have strong quads, but let's do that. Inhale the arms up to shoulder height. We're gonna inhale, lift our legs, lean back just a little bit. Inhale and lift. It doesn't matter how high you go. If you can go high, that's great. But just hold your balance, exhale, and relax. Hold your balance and remember to engage your low back muscles because the idea is to strengthen your back, but this particular episode involves balance. So you will be able to balance your body when your mind is centered, and I think we're timed up.